Hello, this is Petro and you are watching WellCode and this is another video in the Career Path series. In this series we're going to talk about what it takes for a complete beginner to start from scratch and to become a very successful software engineer. This video is all about programming languages. I got asked all the time, what's the best programming language? Which programming language do you use at Google? What's the best programming language for beginners or all sorts of various questions? And if you'll watch this video till the end, you're gonna find out the answer to these questions. Before going into those questions, I wanna make a very important point right from the beginning. Programming languages are just tools who are made for accomplishing different tasks. The same way it goes with computers. You can't just go and ask, oh, tell me what's the best computer. There are people who need PCs because they need powerful machines who are able to edit 4K videos or they need to uh, run very processor-consuming tests. And there are some other people who don't have those needs. For example, if you're traveling a lot, you can travel with a PC and a monitor in your bag. So you'll need a laptop. And you can also split that into multiple decisions. If you're just needing to surf the internet and you need something which is very low weight, then you will need a very small laptop. But if you're still needing some performance, you'll need something which is more heavy. And and the same thing is true for programming languages. If you want to work on a large scale system at Google, you won't use the same programming language as you'll use just to make a simple website for a portfolio presentation. So this is true for programming languages as well. The most important thing is the programming language you learn in the beginning, because after that, it doesn't matter that much because you'll be able to switch languages very fast. A very good software engineer is able to switch languages like this. If you are browsing the internet, you'll see a lot of people who tell you, oh, come here and learn CSS and JavaScript and you'll be able to make websites in one week. And that's true. You can easily copy paste code from the internet and create a website. But if you want to become a successful software engineer who works on important things and gets paid a lot, that is not enough. Just knowing some JavaScript and some HTML and CSS does not make you a good software engineer and will not land you any good jobs. In my opinion, the best programming language to start with is C++. And this is not a popular opinion. People hate C++ and I started to hate it since working at Google. I'm kidding, I'm not hating it, but it's a bit more difficult to write code in C++ than in other languages. Let's explain why it's one of the best programming languages for beginners. C++ doesn't have a lot of safety mechanisms. And you might think, oh, why is that good? In practice, you have all those languages with safety mechanisms, but you can't just have a safety mechanism for every single possible mistake that you can make. You have a lot of safety mechanism, but you can't cover all your possible mistakes. And by starting to learn a language which doesn't have safety mechanisms, it will train your mind to prevent errors. Whenever you're learning, you are writing small programs, short programs which have maybe 30 lines of code or maybe even 100 lines of code. That's not a lot and you can find your mistakes very easy and by being in that process of finding mistakes, understanding why your code doesn't work, will train your mind and you'll start having some habits whenever you are writing code. So you'll pay more attention at all the possible mistakes. And because you're trained yourself to pay attention, you'll prevent all those mistakes. It, you won't need a lot of safety mechanisms anymore. Another important thing about which people don't talk a lot is the speed with which technologies get changed in computer science nowadays and especially in software engineering. If you look a few years ago, you'll see that the popularity of certain languages was much higher and the languages that are popular today were not that popular back then. So the thing is that technologies are switching very fast. And in order to become a successful software engineer, you need to be able to switch languages very fast. Here's another important point for C++. C++ teaches you all the principles and after you know it, well, you can switch from a language to another. So the thing you need to focus the most is just understanding the principles of programming, of being able to develop apps in one language and understand the principles of developing apps. And afterwards, it will be very easy for you to switch languages. So that's why you need to go deep and to be focused and don't just copy paste code from the internet and be happy that it works. Start modifying it and thinking about uh, why does the code work or after you do some modification 
applications, think about why doesn't the code work anymore. That's the most important thing. Because after you got that understanding about code, you'll be able to switch technologies fast, you'll be able to adapt very quickly, and that's one important thing that you want to do. Another thing is that computers talk between each other nowadays because we have the internet. And because of that, they need to speak the same language whenever they're transferring data. So if the data on one computer is in Chinese and he sends uh, that data to another computer who doesn't speak Chinese, it won't be able to understand it. And C++ also developed some habits uh, for that. So for paying attention to data types and how the data is formatted because it it gives you a lot of freedom, but because it gives you a lot of freedom, it also forces you to code the right way. There are other programming languages who are very popular like Python and JavaScript, and those are very easy in the beginning. But the thing is that even though they are very easy in the beginning, you may understand things faster and you'll be able to write more code and you will be able to write code who does more things. If you want to become a good software engineer, you'll still need the knowledge which C++ develops you right from the beginning. But if you want to become a good software engineer, you'll still need the skills that C++ develops in you right from the beginning. So you may be very fast with Python in the beginning, but at some point you'll hit some walls and you'll need to go back and start training your mind. And that thing can be harder because you need to unlearn what you already know and start relearning in a way which uh, makes your mind more focused and more careful about all the mistakes, all the possible mistakes. And now, let's dive into more advanced stuff. So let's say you learn some C++ or any language you choose. What do you do after you learn it? What should you continue with? A lot of times when I was in high school, I was focusing only on learning a new programming language maybe every week or every month. So after learning C++, I started learning PHP and then went back to HTML because I needed to know HTML before uh, writing PHP and did some very basic stuff in PHP, then switched to Java, then to, I think I tried a bit of C Sharp and I wasted a lot of time because I knew all those languages, but I wasn't able to do very much in them. I just learned how to use arrays and how to do very simple things. But in in order to be able to create your own app, you need to know a language very good. So it's not enough to know a bunch of languages and be able to create a hello world or maybe use an array or do some simple problem. You're actually need to develop real world apps. So instead of focusing on learning 10 programming languages, just focus on learning one or two. Let's say you learn C++ in the beginning, then you can switch to JavaScript and create web apps. And you'll be a much better programmer if you go deep into one language and understand the nuances and all the parts you need in order to create a successful app. The thing is that programming languages don't matter that much. You can start learning Python, you can develop your way of thinking, it will be it may be harder, but if you're hardworking, you'll still be able to become a good programmer. So don't start reading a hundred blog posts about programming languages and getting stuck in that decision matrix where you don't know what to choose because all of them have certain advantages and disadvantages and start comparing them. Don't do that. Just start writing code. The programming language doesn't matter that much. If you just want to learn how to write code, go ahead and do it. And if you hit some bumps, just join our Facebook group and go ask there some questions and we are there to help you. We try to help everyone who's there in the group, who's asking questions because our purpose is to help you become a very good software engineer. And as I promised, now let's answer the questions about which programming language is the most used. If you look on, on the internet, you'll see that Java is the most used programming language. And that's because Java is very strict and uh, it's very good for working on large projects when you may not have have the best programmers but because you have Java it has some restrictions and the programmers can't write bad code it forces them more to write cleaner code the second and the third languages are C and C++ and I think nowadays JavaScript is getting uh, a lot more pro popularity another question which I got asked a lot is oh what programming language did you use at Facebook what programming language are you using now at Google 
And the thing is that this depends a lot on the team. So I was in a Android team, so I used Java for that because Java is the language you use if you want to develop code for Android. Nowadays you can also use React Native, but uh, you get the idea. At Google, I work in C++ because the service I work on needs to be very fast. And if you want to do fast things, you need to use C++ or some other more low level language. And also I use Python because uh, the framework for machine learning at Google is Python and I probably need to do some machine learning, but it was very easy for me to learn new technologies. And now let's talk more about the popular programming languages at different companies. So at Facebook, there's PHP. I think they have their own version of PHP and that's because I think they've started writing Facebook in PHP and that's what was popular back then. At Google, C++ is very big because they need to have fast services. They have a lot of services who need to serve billions of people and that's also true for Facebook. I'm sure they have some code which is written in C++. Another big language is Java because Java is used for Android and obviously we have the web development languages like JavaScript and HTML and, uh, and CSS because you can't do web without them. And at Google, another important programming language is Go. I think they created it. I don't know a lot about it because I haven't worked with it. The thing is that you don't need to worry that much about programming languages because most of the big companies don't care that much. So if you're really good in a programming language, they already know that you'll be able to switch very fast because you can't be good at the programming language without being good at programming in general. And that should be your focus. So don't worry a lot about programming languages just take your time start learning start becoming better and you'll see that you'll be able to learn much faster as you become better if you like this video don't forget to hit the like button and to subscribe to our channel we'll be releasing more videos about career and what it takes in order to be successful until next time don't forget to share this video with all your friends this way you're helping the channel a lot and I wish you all the best and I hope you'll become a successful programmer <music>